right hallelujah shalom 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 a good morning good afternoon good evening depending on your time zone and wherever you are watching from in the beautiful name of our lord jesus christ the son of the living god i bless the lord for each one of us i bless the lord for grace i bless the lord for love i bless the lord for his mercy i bless the lord for everything he has done what he's doing and what he's yet to do in Jesus mighty name the son of the living God I take back all the glory and honor to the Lord God Almighty in Jesus mighty name the son of the living God um, I hope you all were able to see the video today I mean uh, the message today that uh, we're not coming online for the prayer altar and I believe that we all pray together we came in agreement yeah because um actually power went off there was a big uh, storm not storm as in those hurricanes and it was just a uh, uh, rain wind it was much so the power went off it just came back a few minutes ago I charged my phone and decided to get online just to be here so you know that I'm here and so the devil can also know that no retreat no surrender we are here of course the Lord knows already he knows that we are here and it's no retreat no surrender any questions you have I'm right here anything you want me to see to know to address to listen to i'm here let me know let me know let me know um some of you might have tried to contact me this evening my phone was off okay it was off um because of the electricity there was no battery Okay, but um, all in all, we bless the Lord for grace. We bless the Lord that this fire is not going to cease. We are going to see the glory of God. You and I are going to see the glory of God. And we must see God come down. We must see the Lord answer our prayers. We must see the Lord change our lives. In Jesus' mighty name. The son of a living God. Any questions? Anything you want me to address? Just let me know. Just let me know. Let me know. Let me know. In the name of our Lord Jesus, the son of a living God. Thank you for keeping up with the grace and keeping up in prayer. Thank you for responding so positively. And I pray that the Lord of glory shall uphold you in that right position until we see his glory. In Jesus' mighty name, the Son of a living God, do not give up the fight. Do not let the devil put you down whichever way. We are fighting. We are ready. This time we are not giving the devil a chance. We're not even giving him any breathing space. If he wants to breathe, he can go to hell and breathe death. This time we're not letting him win no battle. We're not letting him... Mm -mm. No. Akuna Murchezo. <laughs> oh my, my, my. Anyway, God is faithful. God is faithful. Today, uh, to some of you that were with me earlier today at the Daily Bread, I bless the Lord for you in the name of our Lord Jesus, the Son of a living God. I really, really thank God. It was a long session, yeah, but um, we had a wonderful time. I just love it when the Lord speaks to our hearts. Mom, my life is not okay in terms of finance. Why? 
Ken, it is you. Okay? You can't see where the Lord has placed a blessing for you. And you keep running. You keep playing around. If God placed a blessing for you somewhere, and then you keep trying out your luck elsewhere, time will come when you run out of luck. Time will come when you run out of excuses. And I don't think the blessing will still wait. If I may say something, Ken, I am one prophet of God who never goes back on the word that I give to you. If I say this is where God has said he will bless you, that is it. The storm might come and hit you back and forth. There might be this or that or this or that. But we hold on there. We hang on in there. We never give up the fight. Ken, return to the place where the Lord has blessed you. Blessed your blessing. And stop being hyper about life. Stop. There's, there's no more time for you to waste. Stop being excited. Don't be blown by every wind of peer pressure. Your friends will press you. Your friends will excite you. Your friends will, will praise you. They will tell you, oh, you are wow. You are, you are a bomb. You are this. You are that. But the moment you fall, Ken, listen to me and listen good. The day you will fall, the day the hand of the Lord will be off you, you will know. That in all your friends, there was nobody that loved you. And mostly your age brackets, your friends, same, same dreams, same visions. People are just, they cheer you as long as you can run. The moment you fall down and you cannot rise, that is the end of you. I remember some time back, life was so good. The Lord had blessed me. I had all the money I needed. I had all the cars, houses, everything. But the moment people noticed, realized that I'd lost most of the things, even the ones I trusted betrayed me. Even the ones that had the little that was left ran away with it and people stopped taking my calls it is when I realized I was alone and I needed God I started returning to the Lord slowly but slowly I started going back to the drawing board okay what God what did you say you wanted with me or what what did you say you want me to do where do you want me to go and I traced my way back but when I had this money, I didn't have time for people. You come to me, oh, woman of God, pray for me. I didn't. I don't have food. I give you food. I tell you out. You go. Go and eat. I give you money. Go and buy food. But that's not what the Lord wanted of me. I was not supposed to give people. I was supposed to bless them. I was supposed to pray for them. I was supposed to show them the way to go, which I did not do. Ken, it's your life. You meet me tomorrow, I'll say same. You meet me the next day, I'll say same. I never excite people. I tell you the whole truth. You want to take it, you take it. You don't want to take it, you will take it anyway. You will take it. Once all this comes to reality, you will take what I said. You know, most of you, when it's still time of prophecy, you are hyper. You are everywhere. You're running. You're still looking east, west, south, north, and center. But the moment it dawns on you and you see all prophecy come to pass, you start saying, oh, the prophet has told me. I wish I knew. I wish I listened. I wish I had. I wish this. So that is it for you, Ken. You want to see the blessing of the Lord upon your life. Place yourself in the right position.
Now to the rest of us. Where the Lord has placed your blessing, it is where it shall come, it will come from. Most cases, we want to try our luck out there. We want to try a different thing. If God said, this is what you should do, when you start, it might be hard. God said, I shall bless the works of your hands. But if you deal with produce, it shall be much more. If you deal with minerals, I will bless you. If you deal with this, at the start, you might make a lot of losses. At the start, there might be so many ups and downs. That is God. He's visible. What is of the Lord is fault. The devil will look as much as he can. Amen? He will look to frustrate you. He will look to, to disorganize you. So it is up to you to know God has spoken and you work on it. As for me, even when I lost all hope, I just hoped on the word of God. When things get out of hand, I encourage myself in the Lord. Praise the name of our Lord Jesus. So, my beloveds, don't quit fighting. If God has given you a job, take that one. Bit by bit, step by step, he's going to bless you. Focus on doing what is right. Don't run. Don't keep running. Don't leave Uganda to go to Dubai or to go to Abu Dhabi, to go to Qatar or to go to the United States, or the United Kingdom. Go only when the Lord says it is well. Go only when you have the blessing of the Lord. Go only when you are delivered. Even if you live here, hmm? and you, if you were bound, you're bound. Even if they drop you in the, the vault, Of the most biggest bank in the whole world. If you are bound, you're bound. You receive the money today and tomorrow it will be normal. It will not be there. And know what, what some of you, you even bite the hand that feeds you. Some of you, you even cast the plate in which you're eating. The saucepan in which food is coming. Let me tell you. The moment you keep back and forth on the word of God. Your life is going to be stagnant. You're going to be a laughing stock all your life. On small things. Cheap, cheap things that you cannot. Let me give you a testimony. Today I was lying down on my bed. It was all dark and I just lit a small candle. Because the inverter also didn't have power so I lit a small candle and I lay on my bed and the Lord took me through a life of somebody who fully depends on me but still goes and talks ill about me and goes painting me dark to all people he speaks so ill about me and every time he sits down He's gossiping about me. And he's trying to get people to hate me. But he fully depends on me. Like almost everything. And the Lord told me to ask. Like I should ask him. Where does your reward come from? And what do you benefit? I said, you know what? I don't have time for that one. I said I will not ask him. Let his reward come from wherever. Because I am tired. I know 
He's very close to me, by the way. But he is my biggest enemy. And I know it. He drew the enemy line. Me, I have no enemy. I have no enemy. I don't hate anyone. I don't fight people. But people fight me. And you know what? I just tell them, watch the space as the Lord elevates me. As the Lord lifts me. As the Lord exalts me. Just go on. Do whatever you know is best for you. Child of God. This is just a word of advice. If there is anything that you do and you're not receiving no reward, just stop it. Ask yourself, why am I doing this? It's going to help you too much. Like for instance, you come to me and then you start talking bad about your friend. Ask yourself, why am I doing this? You come and start talking about your neighbor. Ask yourself, why am I doing this? If you were telling me about somebody, it's okay to tell me, but ask yourself, why? If you find an answer for that reason, whatever will come out of your mouth, Will purpose for the reason and you shall find your answers some people will come to you and say oh mom I need you to speak to so and so I need you to pray for so and so but the purpose is not for you to pray for them the purpose is you hate them they provoke anger they provoke bitterness from inside of you not right Let's spread more love. Let's spread more unit. Let's build more. Let's build people more. Don't use somebody's weaknesses against them. You are not perfect. I am not perfect. Let me not build, let me not break you because of one small mistake that you have made. I should not overlook I should not overlook the good things that you have done and then criticize you on the small things that actually are nothing compared to the good that you have done. Love. Love is going to lead the way. Today I was talking about the good, the, the, the messages we carry. You see somebody's husband is cheating or somebody's wife is cheating, you run. Before you go to break that heart, ask yourself, why am I doing this? Why? And please, also try to find out the person you're going to tell all that. How are they ready to handle? Unknowingly, we have murdered one another. Unknowingly, we have broken one another. Unknowingly. There is a topic I was talking, I was introducing earlier today, and the Holy Spirit diverted me. But only they that are with wisdom, the Lord shall reveal this to you. If you have ever, ever been in love, you will never break love. You will never despise its strength and power. And you will not overlook it. Amen. Hold on to the grace of the Lord. Hold on to one another. Don't ever let anyone become an access route of the devil in your life. Now listen, today I, I was talking about something. We always concentrate on uh, trying to get things work in our favor. But the more we try to live in denial, is the more we hurt each other. Let's say for instance, you are in a relationship. Let's say you are wedded, you are married, and your husband or your wife is cheating, and you know it. One, if you are going to heal, come in agreement with all this. Accept it. 
the earlier or the faster we accept truth and deal with it, the better. Some people live in denial. There are people I know so well. You tell them this, 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 and this is wrong with you. And you know what? They'll not even accept it. They'll say, ah, but, but they're always explaining. Woman of God, I can explain. You don't understand. Let the Holy Spirit help you. Let the Holy Spirit help you. You need help. If something keeps on happening over and over, every time you're about to get money, something wrong happens. Every time you're about to get money, you get problems that are going to divert the little money that you are getting. You never prosper to go to the next level. Every time you are about to break through in a relationship, a battle comes through and then all of a sudden, it's a breakup. And then you keep on and on. Every time you're about to take the relationship to the next level, there's always something that fights you. Every time you're about to receive that promotion at work, there's a friction, there's a storm, there's this, there's that. And all the time, all your life, you're moving in these circles. You're being hit by every wave that comes. There must be a problem. There must be an access route. And this season, we have to find out what exactly is going on? We have so many tell bearers in our lives. They come to tell you this, they'll tell you that, they'll tell you here, they'll tell you this. And everything they are telling you seems like is in your favor. Seems like it is helping you. But sweetheart, if only you wait to hear what the watchman has to say. If you only wait to hear from the right person that bears the right message. There is something. Let's not fight, fight, fire, fire, fire. Only Jesus' mighty name. Lord, I need deliverance. Lord, I need help. Lord, I need my husband. I need my wife. I need my business. I need my children. I need my marriage. I need this. That is all right. That is all good. But we are collecting it to dump it on mud. We are collecting it to dump it on the same trash, on the same rubbish that is going to be swept away with it. We are collecting it to drop it on the weak foundations that when the storm shakes again, we are going to lose it if the foundations be shaken. We are losing it. We keep losing what we have fought so hard for. Why? And that is the reason, child of God, as a prophet of God, I am ready. I'm ready and I believe this season is not going to leave you the same. But I need you to help me. I need you to help me to stop living in denial. I need you to help me to come in terms with yourself. I need you to help me and accept the weaknesses, the the. That challenge that is inside of you. Break the ego. Break the pride. Break that arrogance inside of you. Break everything that is hindering. That is trying to stand in the way of your miracle. This God is so much willing. This August, God is very willing to do the unspeakable. A testimony that even if we give you a chair and say, oh yeah, testify, you will not. You can't. You just bust out and cry because it will be too much for you. Or you will bust out and laugh because it will be too much for you that no words can express. God is willing to do exceedingly abundantly and above more than we think or ask. This August, I'm not saying next year. I'm saying this August. He's willing. But are you ready? They say, oh, you have anger issues. You're saying no. They say you have a demon. You say no. It's not a demon. It is uh, the, the Holy Spirit. But you don't understand the kind of the Holy Spirit. Sweetheart, we don't need to understand the Holy Spirit. We have the spirit of discernment. 
we can tell this is not the spirit of God. We can tell. You have anger issues. No, no. It is just people that keep angering. Yes, don't explain. You have anger issues. Let's deal with it. You have the spirit of lust over you. No, woman of God. It, actually, in, in my family, we don't even have that problem. But I don't even know what happened. What is wrong with you? Keep quiet. If it is written all over you, then that means it is hidden somewhere inside of you. If it is visible on the outside, that means it is hidden somewhere inside of you. Let's stress it. And don't relax. Don't relax. There are things that leave you because you're already in a sorry state. They don't even have time to access you. Some of you men are faithful to your wives today because you're poor. Because poverty has surrounded you. And the devil, the spirit of lust, fornication and adultery, doesn't even have time to say, ah, that one is finished. But the day you break through and get some money is the day we will know that you are the champion of adulterers. If it is visible somewhere in you, let's deal with it. If you feel it, poverty is limiting you from making that move. Poverty is limiting you from opening that your mouth to say it. But in all truth, lust is eating you up. Fornication is there somewhere. Adultery is there somewhere. Let's accept it. Sweetheart, on this platform, nobody's going to kill you because you committed adultery. No. The perfect ones are in heaven. The saints, they walked with God to heaven. Enoch, he just walked with God and he never returned. He's counted among the saints. Elijah, he was picked up by the chariots of fire. Moses, we don't know how he went, but we see and confirm that he left. You, you were still here. Sweetheart, you're still battling. It's not over yet. Let's fight. So many tell bearers in your life. The Bible says, The message was going to Ahim, to not, it was not going to Ahimaaz. But he ran so fast to go to David. To Eli should carry the good tidings unto the king that the Lord has avenged him. Mm -hmm. Lord has avenged what? Oh, I, woman of God, I can't wait to testify. My husband just came back. No. No. It's just another wave of the devil. It's just another sweep of the enemy. Devil is trying to access you one more time. When the relationship was broken, you were praying 24-7. When you were poor, you were praying 24-7. The only way the devil can get hold of you is to set a bait. And the bait has to come in line with your prayer request. And you'll be excited. I say, oh, woman of God, I can't believe the Lord has done it for me. He is back. Ooh. I got it. Yes. I received it. You can't even believe it's a miracle. It's not a miracle. It is a trap. An ex-boyfriend came in my life and paid my bills. So uh, he said he's sorry. Sorry. No. Let's look visibly. Let's accept truth. Okay? Somebody left your life. Accept it. First accept it. Don't attach anything to it. 
Because some of you look for, you throw pity parties. Look for sympathy. And you want everybody to feel for you. As you go out there, you return tramming, you're, you're doing all sorts of this and that and throwing pity parties. You need everybody to, to, be, to sympathize with you. Which is okay. Because you're human. But give it a name. Give a name. To everything. That you see in your life. Give it a name. Because there is a name somewhere. It does exist. And let's deal with it. Amen. And as we pray on. Child of God. As we pray on, be flexible. Don't be too stiff-necked. Now, um, since we are in prayer, this month, I'm going to switch off all my phones. Because I don't want any distracting calls. I don't want any tempting calls. I just want to focus on me, my prayers, and my God, so I can get a breakthrough. Stop. Stop lying to yourself and lying to me and lying to God. Because such does not exist. It's a lie. Oh no, it's a season of prayer. Please don't call me, you'll call me later. Don't be such... A hypocrite or a felicitine, a felicitine. When it's Ramadan, they, they cover up everywhere. You see, holier than that. They are also good. They are trying to play the, but as soon as Ramadan is over, they do all kinds of rubbish and wait for the next fasting season. Whose time are you wasting? Why are you lying? Now this is true salvation. Be yourself. You fall. For the grace is sufficient, you will rise. You will be picked up. You will be lifted. A righteous man shall fall and is lifted seven times. Don't hide your true self. A woman of God, you know, I am single and I am waiting upon the Lord. I don't want anyone to come near me. The devil to, uh, behind me, you devil. And you know, I will never, ever, ever, no sex without marriage. And if you find out what they are doing, if you find out what they are doing, all in the name of single. It's a whole lie. Let God deal with sin. You will be forgiven. The blood of Jesus will plead for you. Don't expose yourself to evil. Don't. Evil is bad. Don't expose yourself. Evil is very dangerous. Don't justify sin. The other day I was talking I was talking on I was on this actually topic of the single and waiting upon the Lord eh, de, 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 all that. And somebody told me their pastor told them it is actually okay. To deal with self-love. Which kind of doors are you opening? Which kind of spirits are you giving yourself to? 
don't even ever ever think about it if it is there i am not condemning you let's pray that it gets out of you but don't ever be comfortable with it don't get married because you cannot control your feelings don't get married because you cannot control your sexual appetite that's dangerous tomorrow when your spouse has gone on a business trip tomorrow when your fiance your husband your wife has gone somewhere for ministry we are going to find you with the gardener we're going to find you with a housemaid we're going to find you with all kinds of people why because you are living a lie first deal with self deal with your ego deal with your high appetite let the holy spirit help you have some self esteem then when we present you into marriage you're ready you are ready to be contented you're still running around you wasting our time so man of god i want to get married you see a small one you want to jump on that one you see a fat one you want to jump on that one you see a tall one you want that one you see the one with the big behind you want that one you see a one with a small belly you want that one what else do you not want how about we first deal with those demons that are all over you before we take you to the aisle for you to say i do there is a couple I wedded some time back and I was in tears. I tried to talk to both of them. I said, I don't think this is right. They said, no, but we are in love with one another. I said, you guys are making a mistake. They say, it's not a mistake. We prayed about it. The Lord spoke. We did this and there is nobody that is so disobedient and stiff necked like a person who thinks they have had God. If you ever try to correct someone and they tell you God said, please step aside, don't waste your time, don't speak no more. Those ones, you can never change them. I said, this marriage is not going to last. They said, woman of God, we don't care. What we do is we love one another. We can't wait to be with one another because God spoke, God showed us, God, I said, which God? Which God for crying out loud. Anyone anyway, said God. What is of you? You just told me let the wolves be. I did my part. And when I reached the wedding ground. They told me servant of god we've already exchanged our vows we've already put on the rings just bless the marriage i said okay to bless no problem i blessed them and introduced them to the congregation and that was it But the issues that keep coming to my table are so annoying. To the extent that I reached and blocked, I said, no. oh yeah, I am done. Let's deal with your sin. Hmm? Let's deal, deal with your boyfriend, girlfriend rubbish. We can handle that one. But don't carry your undelivered self into marriage we're gonna have trouble it's not gonna last and listen to me some relationships are already dead some marriages are already dead but they keep up their appearance 
they keep up the appearance. And on the outside, you find the husband is in love with someone else and the wife is in love with someone else. But because, the, because of the fear of what people will say, because of the fear of, of my parents, my father, my mother, I thank God for my parents. They don't care. Provided I am happy, they are fine. Provided their daughters are okay, they are okay. And the son, they don't have no problem. It's up to you. You decide. I've never seen them say, when will you get married? Psh. Never. You want to get married? Go. You don't want to get married? Be. It's your life. Child of God. Don't die in that thing you call a marriage. If it needs grace, don't act. You be pastor's wife. You be pastor's husband. Prophetess's wife, prophetess's husband. Don't keep up the appearance. Don't die. One time, I was watching a video of a man of God who had passed and when he was preaching I felt the pain in his voice I said how did I not hear this video this man was crying of a broken marriage he was crying because of condemnation this man might have gotten himself okay I got it in revelation this man made a mistake in his marriage a man of God. And the wife came to learn about it. And that was the food to bed. That was the breakfast out of bed. He was being condemned every day. He could not preach comfortably because he appeared as the devil. He could not pray well because every time he was trying to pray, the wife was condemning him made him feel unworthy, made him feel unclean. This man died years back. But his real death happened this year. But every time he would step on the pulpit, he would say, I want to die. I wish I die. I am not afraid of death. I want to go and be with my father. That is what he kept on saying. There is no silent murderer like a broken heart. Somebody can have HIV and live for years. Someone can have cancer. They live for years. They fight it and overcome it. But nobody can fight a broken heart. No one. No matter how strong you are, if you say you can deal with a heartbreak, sweetheart, it was a lie. You were not in love. It was a lie. This is something you can never heal from. Even if somebody comes back to you and says, I am sorry, I will never do it again, I promise you. There will always be, and mostly with the ladies, there will always be that one thing that reminds you of what they did. And the pain comes back afresh. Afresh. Like you didn't say, I forgive you. Like you didn't say, let's move on. Let's forget the past. It is hard. These are realities we have to accept. These are things that we need healing from. If you have been at that point of a heartbreak and you were still with a person that broke your heart, sweetheart, come in terms with it. Come in terms with it. I can promise you that they will change but I can promise that the Lord will heal that heart and you'll be fine. 
Right now, you are cocooned somewhere. And you are living half of your life. In misery and pain. Because of one particular thing that happened. So the rest of your life left to live. You are insecure. You are hurting. You're full of bitterness. And a lot is going on through you. One minute we have you, the next minute it is somebody else. You need a healing. Before we deliver you into another relationship, we need you to heal. Before we move you into another environment, we need you to heal. We need you to come in terms with everything. And listen to me. If they fired you, they might have said, you're not good enough. They have no say. Okay? They have no say. I want to tell you, your time was up. It was over. When they hired you, you were good enough. They exhausted you. They exploited you. Don't let anybody ever tell you that you are not good enough. They have no say. They don't have a say. They don't have eyes. They can't see. They don't have ears. What they know you have revealed unto them. What they know you have exposed. What they don't know is inside of you. And you can only let people see what you have to offer. You can only let people see what you allow them to see. Do you know that there is that one thing in you? That no matter what happens to you, no one can ever know it. No one. Hey mom, please pray for my pregnancy. I'm having weird dreams and I'm worried about it. No, it came by the hand of the Lord. I pray that one you know. Okay, it came by the hand of the Lord and I'm going to do everything possible to get the Lord to protect it. And I believe that the Lord of glory is going to watch over you. Okay, the devil is trying to come back, but he lost the battle already. The Lord that gave you the baby will protect it to the right time of deliverance in Jesus' mighty name. Those dreams that you get, if kindly you can inbox me on WhatsApp. It could be a communication, okay? It could be something that we might have not known. Something that might have not been revealed unto me. So please, don't hesitate. Every dream you get, just inbox me and I'll handle, I'll deal with that. In Jesus' mighty name, the Son of a living God. Amen. So, child of God, don't let the situation explain it. They're not what today is saying. Okay, Professor, I've seen that. I will. Hallelujah. Child of God, we need total deliverance this month. We need total healing. We need peace. If you don't feel the fire anymore, don't try to rekindle it. First, find out. What happened to the fire that was once so lit? What happened? If situation has robbed you of the fire, that's going to change. You might be maybe in a relationship or you are married, but 
you no longer have the fire of your relation of your love and everything it's okay that one might have been robbed by the situation you're going through financial struggles this and that but if everything is fine and you still don't feel the fire don't waste your time you're too precious to waste time with people that don't value you. You're too precious to waste time with people that are going nowhere. You're too precious to waste time on things that don't add anything to you. You're too precious to waste time where you are. Don't waste time with the wrong people. Don't waste time with people that don't appreciate you. With people that don't value you. With people that don't understand you. If you felt the fire someday, today it's gone. Please, let's come in terms with it. What's going on? What's going on? Finally. Don't ever, ever let anyone explain to you you stand with God. Don't. Oh, you sinned. You are no longer a child of God. Oh, you did this. You are no longer. No. Don't ever let anyone, anyone, not even me, say that. You sinned. It's okay. What's God saying? Don't let anybody condemn you. Don't let anyone kill your, your boldness and confidence in the Lord. Just let God be the one to speak. Your stand right now, it is only God that knows it. It is only God that understands you. It is only God that can interpret everything that you are going through. In Jesus' mighty name. Finally. There are tell bearers, the people who come to your life to tell you what they had. But they overheard. They heard someone saying. There are people who come in your life to tell you what they think. There are people One minute. Mom, months ago I got delivered in a church, a certain church in Cairo, but since then I see things and disappear immediately. Rats, insects, and people. Did you get deliverance? I'm not sure. Hallelujah. Child of God. There are so many Ahimas that overheard. They just carry second-hand info they don't carry the right message don't let these people ruin your life they have something to say yeah they do let me read you a scripture in line with it they have something to say yes amen but please, judge who has the final say in your life. Listen unto me. Then said Ahimaaz the son of Zadok, Let me now run and bear good tidings, king tidings, how the Lord has avenged him of his enemy. And Joab said unto him, Thou shalt not bear tidings this day, but thou shalt bear tidings another day, but this day thou shalt no, bear no tidings, because the king's son is dead. Mm -hmm. Then Job said to Cush or Kashi, Go tell the king that thou hast seen. And Cush bowed himself unto Job and Dren. And then Ahimaaz, the son of Zadok, yet again to Job. But howsoever, let me, I pray thee, run after Cush and 
Job said, Wherefore will thou run, my son, seeing that thou hast no tidings? Now listen unto me. It was not him. You are in the church of the prophet. But there is a humus. He overheard. But he was not there. Second Samuel chapter 18 and verses 18. Thank you so much, Regina. Hallelujah. There's so many Ahimas everywhere. The prophet prophesies and they come and tell you what they think. The pastor is teaching, is preaching, they are interpreting. They are carrying, they are telling you, they, these people have destroyed much. But if you only be vigilant, there are so many people that are not the ones bearing the tale. They're not the ones to pass the message, but they've come faster. They're telling you what you should do and what you shouldn't do. It is well, but please let everybody tell you what they want to say. But my dear, weigh everything that comes to you. Listen, the Bible says, but howsoever he said, let me run and unto him run. He, eh? Let me, but howsoever he said, let me run. And he said unto him, run. Then Ahimaaz ran by the way of the plain and overran Cush or Kashi. Amen. There are people that are carrying the message that they are not even supposed to deliver. But they are running faster than the people that have the fast hand information. Today, the spread of the false gospel is going faster. It's going more. Because the people that have the right doctrine might be running slow, but they are going somewhere. They carry the fast hand information. But some people run faster. They run faster. They'll tell you everything. Oh, this and that. I see this, I see that, I see that. But child of God, who is the right prophet in your life? Who is the right person to advise you? Who is the right person to tell you about your life? about your relationship, about your business. And why are they telling? Because what they carry, they think is good news. And the reason why they came so fast, they thought that's what you want to hear. But it might not be. Somebody is telling you about your wife, your husband, your fiancé, your boyfriend. They think that is what you want to hear. You want to find out their misdeeds. You want to find out the past. You want to find out what they used to do, but you want to find out about their ex. What for? You are not a philosopher. You're not a historian. What are they telling you those for? Or here are children with A, B, C, D, E, F, G. For what? For what? You know what you want. Concentrate. To them, it looks like an enmity. To you, it's love with no boundaries, no limitations, no strings attached. How about we concentrate on that? To you, they need, for them, they need you to, to be married to some kind of angel. Amen? But to you, you are fine. You are not looking for an angel. You know all people are not perfect. Let's deal with that. Bear good tidings. Which one? Somebody sees something that is going to break your heart, but they're still coming to break it. They come running so fast because they have legs. They come to you, oh, woman of God, I saw this, I saw this, I did. I, please, I just hope it doesn't break your heart. I just hope you don't cry. But you know I have to tell you because I love you so much. And I know if you don't know about it, I, it's rather you know and you deal with it than... 
Really? Really? You don't even look at the situation that somebody is in before you carry that your message. You don't even know how they're going to receive it. Some people can't live with, with betrayal. So before you tell them how they were betrayed, please, first find out. Because some messages you're going to kill people. I tell you, some of that you gossip, you're going to kill people. Don't carry a message until you know it is good enough. This man was told, it is not good for you to go and tell the king about the death of his son. And it was not even him that was supposed to carry the message. Oh, but because he was the son of Zadok. Hmm. So they think, you know these sons of the prophets, the sons of the pastors, they are wiseacres. You find them because they carry the handbag of the prophet, they think they are prophets too. You find them because they carry pastor's bag, they think they are pastors too. Mommy, was, mommy actually said that she never wants to see you again because you were so annoying. Sweetheart, I'm not an evil spirit that I manifest through you. How about you be silent? Let me know who I hate and talk to them. Let me know who I love and tell them. How many did you tell I love? And how many did you say I hate? And don't ever be foolish enough. If you have a relationship with somebody and somebody is telling you about them, be careful. Don't let people fool you. Or somebody comes to you and says, Oh, Pastor Susie, mommy says she hates you. So what? Do I fear you? No, I don't. If I hate you, I'm going to come and say, I hate you. I have no problem. I tell you. People who know me know it. You annoy me, I'm going to tell you. You annoyed me, I don't like you. I don't want to talk to you. Leave me alone. I'm that straight. Amen. If I love you and I see a mistake about you, I keep telling you. I either call you or I send a text. Text is my thing. I rarely call people. I don't call. I text. But I'll tell you. I'll tell you, you know what? I'm not happy with you. I'm not happy with the things that you said. And that is it. And the moment I talk about something, it is done. I don't know how to get over angry. If I am angry right now and I call you, I tell you everything. That I'm not happy with you. I am so angry. I am this, I'm that. You did this, you did that, you did that. That is the end. You not see me hold a grudge. You not see me get angry with, I don't know how to get angry for more than the time I carry it on my heart. The moment I talk about it, that is the end of it. And that is why so many people, they take me for granted. They even say, ah, mommy is, is no, leave her, leave her. You've annoyed her, just keep quiet, just leave her. After some time, she's going to come to you and everything's going to be fine. That one is going to forgive you even if you don't say sorry. But I always tell them, I forgive you not because you're precious in my sight. I forgive you not because you are special. I forgive you because I have no room for hatred in my heart. I have no room for bitterness in my heart. I don't have that. I was surprised. I might be some people's enemy, but surely as the Lord lives. And upon the throne of glory, no one can I tell you that I hate this person or this one is my enemy. No one in this whole world. I might be angry with someone, but I don't hate people. And I bless the Lord for that grace. I have no enemy. If God told me to give him a list of my enemy, 
I swear I might not even get one person. Not even one. <laughs> and some people say I'm abnormal. But me, I'm very normal. I'm fine. I'm fine. I've come a long way to be where I am today. And I, I know the things that value, that have carry value. I know things that matter in my life. I know things that are important. I know what I should hold on to and what I shouldn't hold on to. Okay, you annoyed me or you angered me. But who are you that you eliminate the Holy Spirit from my life? I need the Holy Spirit more than you. So I do myself a favor if you annoy me. I do myself a favor because I know I cannot live without the Holy Spirit. I cannot survive without the Holy Spirit. So I do myself a favor and forgive you because I need the Holy Spirit more than this small rubbish grudge that I should be holding against you. I need the Holy Spirit more than this anger. So I have no room for that in me. That is why you even find young kids. They mistreat me. Like for instance, you call them and tell, tell them, this that you did is not right. Here you made a mistake. This is not right. And they're staying in your house. Like they call you mommy. And because you, you told them, you did this, you did this, I don't like it. This you did is wrong. They don't talk to you. For like the whole day, two days, a week, they don't talk to you. And I have no problem. A kid finds you in a corridor and it's like they want to knock you down. You're like, okay, enjoy your seed. Tomorrow you're going to reap it. No problem. You might not reap it as a pastor, but you're going to reap it as a woman, as a wife, as a mother. So, I believe in the principle of sowing and reaping. If you do something good, it's for yourself. If you do something bad, it is for yourself. You were, everything you were doing today is for you. If you help me, you're doing it for you. If I help you, I'm doing it for me. I'm not helping you for you. I'm helping you for me. That is why I don't have a problem if I do something good for you and you do bad to me. I don't have a problem. And listen to me, you will never stop me from doing what I'm supposed to do. If I found you yesterday in need, I helped you, you betrayed me, it does not mean I'm not going to help anybody else that is in need. I'm going to do it. Because I'm not doing it for you, sweetheart. I'm doing it for me. I've understood the principle of sowing and reaping. I've understood the principle of seasons and times. I've understood... The principle, it doesn't matter. If you don't believe in God with the principle of sowing and reaping, you will believe in karma. What goes around must come around. If you don't believe in karma you will, or fate, you will believe in the, the power of upthrust. That is physics and gravity. What goes up must come down. So it doesn't matter whether you believe or you don't believe. Whichever corner in this world, what man does, it shall be done unto them, whichever way. So we have to be very careful. You are rejoicing today because I have fallen. I wonder who is going to pay you. And what's your reward here? Somebody's marriage is broken, you're rejoicing. Who are you? Who do you serve? Is it God? No, not God. He's not like that. Okay? It's not God. He's not like that. You're sowing bitterness, hatred. Who do you serve? Is it this same God? Child of God. You're running to tell the message. Oh, my dear, I saw your husband. You come, 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 come. Please, you're going to kill somebody. You're going to give them a heart attack. Don't. The other time, I was somewhere. 
and I saw one of my daughter's husbands misbehaving. I said, oh, okay, I've seen you. I sent him a message. I said, I want to talk to you. Please come. He says, where am I? I said, just in the parking lot. So he gets out of where he was to a parking lot. I gave him a very big slap and I said, you dare do that again. I'll show you. You can go. He just said, thank you, ma. I said, good. We're done here. Sorted. There's no need for my daughter to know about that. For what? I got it sorted. I got it sorted. Because I always tell people, if you're going to eat a rat, eat a fat one. Some people are just a disgrace. You are married, man, and I'll see you tickling a housemaid. I'll slap the hell out of you. I'll slap the rubbish out of you. A maid? Okay, let your demons have some class. Let that, those your rubbish demons have some sense of class. Don't reduce a woman like me to a level of house girl. Don't reduce the wife, your wife, intelligent, of class. I'm not saying house girls are not intelligent. I'm not, it, don't reduce the level of, of master to, to servant. Don't, don't bring that spirit of slavery on me. I am a boss. I am a master. So if you that I share a bed with goes to a level of a servant, you are declaring servanthood on me. You actually just said you were there by mistake, but this is where you belong. But if you come from servanthood, you are a servant. You are dating a servant, and then you go to that level. Maybe I will understand. Let me tell you, there are some, some rubbishes of, of woman of God. It was a mistake. It was the devil. Listen to me. If the devil got to tempt you, please let him leave some common sense in you. Because I find you. Sure. Let the devil leave some common sense. Oh, I couldn't hold myself. I couldn't, a woman of God, I couldn't avoid it. With a mad woman. How much more can the devil humiliate you? How much more can you reduce yourself by the hand of the devil? Why are you letting the devil mis mis misuse you? Hmm? I hear a woman of God and... God lead you in my hands, I see you. Oh, God just, you know these people, like for instance, they are at a function or party or something. You see a man, I can't do it. They do like this. If God show me that you are a married man to one of my daughters and I see you do this one, I will follow where it's going. Of course, I know. If you do it to someone, it's going to end up with a smile. I'll follow it. And where I see the smile, sweetheart, it better be somebody I know or I trust. If you are doing it to your sister-in-law, a sister to your wife, it better be the one that I trust. Because if I see this one, I follow it and I see a blush. Hmm? I will say, oh yeah, come. I'll borrow you from your wife and say, excuse me, 
I have a word for this one. I'll take you in darkness and I'll slap you. If somebody should tell you, this hand, this one, it looks very small. But if I slap you with it, ask the people I've ever slapped. I don't do it normally. But if I slap you with this hand, And some of you need spiritual slapping. I see you misbehaving. I wait when you're putting that your stomach up like this. You're trying to get some sleep with your big stomach on top. I just... Oh! You wake up with constipation. It pains you for three days. And then I'll let you go. I'll let you go there for two hours. And when you come back, you will walk nicely. And the moment you enter that bed, I'll show up and say, don't ever do that again. Me, I do that. I beat people spiritually, if you didn't know. Praise the name of our Lord Jesus. Now, as we slap some people in the stomach, make sure you know who tells you what. Who is carrying what. Because some people are running with the wrong messages. Some people are just running with distraction. They think it's good news, but it's not. They think it's going to make you happy, but it's going to break your heart. They think it's going to make you smile, but it's going to make you hurt. Don't. Way who tells you what? It's your sister. How much do you love them? How much do you love? How much do they love you? How much do you trust them? How much do they trust you? That also matters. Amen. And above it all, listen closely to the watchman. Listen closely to the watchman. Some things are not what you see. Some things are not what you think. And give yourself time. Give yourself peace. Sweetheart, do you know why we have joints in our bodies? God created those joints for a reason. This head can turn back and forth. Your hands, okay? You have a joint here, ball and socket. You have a joint here, you have the joints there. It's for a reason. When you cannot stand, please sit. When you cannot sit, get on your knees. When you cannot get on your knees, lie down. All this flexibility in your body is for a reason. Utilize your body very well. When it's time to squat, please do. But when it's time to come together, you cannot pray while squatting. And if you squat to do something like, for instance, maybe you're asking for a hand in marriage and they say, will you marry me while squatting? Somebody might not take it serious. But the flexibility, the knee, speaks greatly amen you are trying to say i might be taller i might be higher i might be bigger but i'm ready to come to your level do you accept me i'm ready to come a little bit lower than you do you accept me if somebody say yes don't take it lightly if you said yes don't take it lightly. If somebody is able to say, okay, I can bend, but I'm not bending. I'm just lying down. I can sit, but I'm not sitting. I'm just lying down. I want to have rest with you. Grant me the rest. Give the person the rest. 
If somebody lie beside you, they should have sat and watched you. They should have squatted. They should have stood. But they are lying down to get some rest right beside you. It's because they know they can find rest with you. So please, can you give it? Give people rest. Don't be too materialistic. Don't let what someone is today blindfold you. That your husband, that your wife, they might be in a financial struggle, in a situation. Don't describe them to that. That is just a situation it will pass. And if somebody can tolerate you enough when you have nothing, sweetheart, what else are you looking for? Some of you are so intolerable when you have nothing. No, some of you are tolerable when you have nothing, but very intolerable if you have something. Sweetheart, bend it, break it, disorganize it, uproot it, because that is holding you in that situation. It's holding you. God knows. God knows that some of you, if he blesses you today, he will never see you again. If he blesses you today, you are literally going to turn yourself into a devil's agent. If he blesses you today, he knows you are going to make everyone's life around you miserable. That is why he's holding you so down. Because you're saying, God, give me money that my neighbors will know. That will suffer. I will show them. God is not about grudges. Okay? Child of God. Let's bend it. Let's break it. Let's uproot it. Let's do it the will of God. Let's do it the way of the Lord. This season, surely, at least each one of you is going to see a sign. It's going to see a wonder. It's going to see a miracle, provided you obey, provided you commit, provided you are ready. Because the Lord is vowing unto himself that he's going to come through. He's going to deliver. He's going to set free. He's going to heal. He's going to work wonders. So please, let's help one another. Let's deal with those small, small things that would take away the glory of God. Let's deal with those small things that could stand in the way of the Lord. Those things that could hinder us from seeing the glory. In Jesus' mighty name. I just spoke my heart. And of course the heart of the Lord. Child of God. God's willing. God is going to do it for you. But please. Help him do it for you. Make it easier. And please, help yourself by doing it for you. In Jesus' mighty name, the Son of a living God. Draw your circles and draw them well. Draw them well. Know who is close to you. Know who has a say. Know who says what. Know what goes where. Just know. Break those things. Don't turn yourself into a dumping site. That everyone, they've had, I hear a cat gave birth to cow. They come tell you and you are listening. I hear Chinese came flying in the air and landed on the roof. You, you are listening. Don't, don't, don't let people turn you into rubbish pits. Me of a kind. You start saying, hey mommy, yeah. please. Please, just, just let me be. You tell me I hear this one invented. Well, what am I benefiting from the invention? Ah, leave me alone. Don't tell me. Mommy, you see, the other one was talking. Shut up. I don't want to know. If they were talking behind my back, that means they didn't want me to hear. Period. Why are you making me know? I'm not supposed to know.
If somebody is not bold enough to face me and tell me what they want to say to me, that means there's something about me. It's the problem. It's the problem. If they have a problem with me and they can't come address it for me to see what to do about it. If you have a problem the way I talk to you and you cannot tell me, mommy, you're too tough or mommy, you're too blue black or mommy, you are this, you are that. That means maybe you have no problem about it. So what? let me tell you, if somebody talked about you and they didn't tell you, don't tolerate the people that come and tell you, oh, I did, 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 so and so, so and so. No, tell them, why are you telling me? If they didn't come to tell me, that means I'm not supposed to know. So if I am not supposed to know, they have a reason why they're holding it back. Sometimes the fear on you, the glory of God that is upon you, the power of God that is upon you. People want to say something, but they can't face you. And sometimes if people are not bold enough to say it in your face, they're actually lying. Because if you surely know that I am that bad, face me then. What is wrong with you telling other people? That means you have no problem. If I am that bad and you are not telling me to change, that means you have no problem me being this bad. So deal with it. Stop stressing over non-issues. I hear your boss talked about you. That's the problem. Oh, I hear so-and-so hates you. If somebody hates you, it's their problem. It's not your problem. If somebody doesn't like you, it's not your problem, sweetheart. Mind your business. If somebody is talking ill about you, please add some value to yourself. Don't, don't diminish yourself to that level. People fear you. They can't come to you. They can't face you. They can't say anything in your face and you are reducing yourself and going to them to ask them to say it to you. Stop it. Don't be such a fool. I hear so and so said you are useless. I'm not. So I'm not going to give them a chance to go and say, hey, hey, they told me that you said that I'm useless. Oh, sweetheart. I'm not useless. So whatever you say, the fact that you cannot say it in my face, that means I am not useless and you know it. Let the devil have some job. Let him do it with his agents. Don't let him use you against yourself. Don't let him use you to intimidate, to frustrate, to insult, to everything. Don't give the devil that chance. You're greater. You're precious. If people don't appreciate you, it is their problem. You are precious. If people don't love you, that is their problem. You are lovable. If they don't understand you, that is their problem. Because they've not put in any efforts. If they really wanted to understand you, they would have by this time. What is wrong? And you are not a syllabus. Are they supposed to study you? If somebody cannot accept you who, the way you are, if somebody cannot accept the true you, then please don't act up for anybody. Don't pretend for anybody. You are putting on a tight pant up to here. Hmm? You can't even breathe because somebody cannot accept you with a big stomach. Sweetheart, stop living a lie. That your stomach, you are bulging and hiding. If you are not doing it for you, don't do it. If you want to see yourself with calves and everything, put on, actually you can't even put on iron bars. Hmm? But if you are doing it for somebody else, you're wasting your time. If they cannot accept who you are, they will never accept anything. If somebody does not love the way you are, they don't they can't stand who you are. Don't live a lie. Because that lie, you're not going to live it for too long. You put on a gutter today. You're like this. You can't even breathe. Tomorrow, same thing. How long are you going to do it? Don't lose yourself. 
Don't don't super glue on anybody. If they don't appreciate you, they don't love you the way you are, sweetheart. God has one person like this who can kill for you. Who will do anything to have you in their lives? Who will appreciate you? Who will see the beauty, the intelligence, the strength and everything? Don't let human beings kill you before your time. Don't die of stress. You find people... Me, I... Let me tell you. I'm, I'm a very free person. Very free. Finally, it, this is the thing that... I'm a very free person. I wouldn't mind my appearance. Sometimes you should find me out there. Mm -hmm. I just put on my sandals. And my very free dress, I walk out. I go anyhow. It's up to you. Oh, women of God, your nails, you need to make them. Mm? If I have time, I'll make them. If I don't have time, sweetheart, I'm fine with my nails. I'm fine. The times I want to look good. There are times I just want to look my way. The times I want to do some little bit of... Because the only thing I do on my face is the, this one. The times I want to rub the lipstick and smile a little bit, and that is it. But I find people, they're powdering me. They're, eh, eh, eh. I can't hold up those things. I can't keep up their appearance. I can't. And I'll tell you, I, I'm a woman of God, we are going for a wedding. I'll tell you, at least every wedding, there's always that one person who is not good enough. Let me be that one person. Leave me alone. If you don't want me to come, then I'm fine. You're not going to make my life miserable. Oh, man of God, why don't you go and get a surgery and take off this car? This car doesn't eat food. Okay? This car holds a very big, big memory in my life. I got it on my son's birthday. I was running away from the Lord. And the Lord said, do not go. I said, I will go. If you want, you kill me. And I got this accident. It's a constant reminder. And if you have a problem with my scar, you have a problem. You need to see a doctor. You need to see a psychiatrist. You need to see a counselor. You need to see whatever. Help yourself. It's my scar. Do you have a problem with What if it was a flower? Or what if it was a tattoo? Or what if it's a scar? What's wrong with it? What's wrong with it? I have eyes, I see. I have nose, I see. Mouth, what else do you want? Don't live a lie. No matter how perfect you bring yourself out, if you will have it, You will have it. If you will never have it, you will never. And let me tell you, if somebody is looking for perfection in you, that means they're still looking for perfection because nobody is perfect. So they're going to look at you and they are looking for perfection. They're not going to find any because you are not perfect. They're going to look for somebody else and have somebody else and somebody else. If somebody never appreciate who you are from the beginning, they will never appreciate you no matter what you do with yourself. If somebody is complaining about your chubby cheeks, even if you lose weight for them, they'll complain about the tiny bones. They'll complain about the fat legs. They'll complain about the, 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 the undone nails. They'll complain about the, the hair you're putting on. Every, if somebody is looking for faults, if somebody only sees faults, if somebody only sees imperfection, impurities, that is who they are. You can never change them. So don't reduce yourself for anything Anybody whatsoever, be comfortable, live for you. And finally, God did not come in your life to make you miserable. God came to give you a life, and life 
in abundance. Through his son, he came to give you life in abundance. Describe to me this life. And I will give you this God that will give you a life. What is life if you cannot laugh? What is life if you cannot? You want to scream. You want to shout. You want to be out there and, and feel young again. You want to be out there and feel you are on top of the world. So what is life if you cannot test any of this? What is life if you cannot feel young again? What is life if you cannot feel older than your age? What is life if you cannot feel exactly what you want to feel? The Lord is the truth, sweetheart. Live your truth. Some of you, finally, finally, this is my last one. Finally. Some of you are party animals. You're like cakes. You never miss any party. You are for the birthday showers. You are for the birthdays. You are for, for the baby showers. You are for the baby baby bath. You are for a, a, a bachelor party. You are for the party. You are for the whatever, the pre-party, the party, and then the after party. You are like a cake. And that's your life. And that's what gives you joy. Sweetheart, if that is your life, you want to go for parties that you can even forge an invitation to just appear at a party. Go! Go! Okay? Go! Go! This God is a God that if you are going to Tarsus and he doesn't want you there, he'll show up. He'll carry you back home. He'll carry you back to Nineveh where he wants you to be. This God is the God of Saul to Paul. Eh? If he sees you doing the wrong thing and there's something he wants to do, he will show up. Even if it means blinding you now, you lose your way and then he take you back. No, I'll give this testimony and go. We were in, in, in Jobak. We went to Santan town. When I was in Santen, there is a hotel I saw. And then I say, the next time I come, I will sleep in that hotel. So we went back to Santen with, with my son right there, Paul Motwana. And I was with the team. Pastor Luleika and then Pastor Nesh. When we went around, I we first go to some hotel. I hate small windows i just hate them i feel i'm suffocating i don't like small windows if i'm going to a house or a hotel the first thing i'm going to look at the windows then after that i look at the bathroom i want to see how does the bathroom look like the windows and the bathroom they speak a lot about me the kitchen comes in later so I say, mm -mm, I can't be here in this small place that has windows that are like chimneys. I refused. So we decided to go and look for another hotel. And you know something? There's like so many hotels in the same place. So we went around the Mandela Square. We saw about four or five hotels. But we missed all their entrance. Their entrances, we missed them. They show you, oh, this is the entrance to the hotel and you follow the arrow, you follow the directions and you get there, there is a Lord Brook, there is nobody there, the gate is closed and they're saying only stuff. And you go around, we looked for hotel almost a whole hour. And what was fighting me was the word of my tongue. And the only entrance we found was the entrance to the hotel I had said I would sleep at. And it's the hotel we ended up, we ended up in. Amen? Because why? There's something I spoke 
and the Lord honored it. And when I wanted to go to all the other places, he didn't let me. He made sure it doesn't happen until I ended up where I was supposed to go. If God doesn't want you to go to a place, sweetheart, if you only let him be God, let God be God, and you go do with yourself whatever you want to do. God will bring you back. God will draw you back with his mighty hand. God will pull you back with his hand of righteousness. He will do everything. Why don't you like small windows? I don't know. I don't know. No particular reason. But I don't like anything that has small windows. And I don't like small places. If it's, it's a house, if it's a bedroom, it has to be big. If it's a bathroom, it has to be big. I want big, I want spacious things. You should see my bathroom. It's like a whole bedroom. I just want, I don't know, maybe I just, but I don't need deliverance. I'm fine. I'm okay. I love big windows. I'm fine. Thank you. I love big, big bathroom. I'm fine. Thank you. Because that is my, my, I don't know, but my bed is like my, my battlefield. You might, ne you might never see me. If, if I stay in the house for a month, you might never find me in the sitting room. My bedroom is my everywhere. I can stay in my bedroom the whole month without getting out. When everything finds me there. And my bathroom too. There are times I just wake up and I want to sit in my bathroom. So maybe I carry my phone. Or my Bible. I go to the bathroom. I just want to be there. That is why I want it neat and perfect. So I don't know. Maybe there is a mystery to that. If you ever get revelation, kindly let me know. Yeah, but I don't need deliverance on that. I'm fine with big windows. I'm fine with big bathroom and big bedroom. I'm fine. Hmm? Don't pray for deliverance. Just pray for revelation and that's it. I'm fine with it. <laughs> Anyways, child of God, be flexible. Okay? Why am I asking you to be flexible? Because if you are flexible, you give God a chance to work in your life. You give the Holy Spirit chance to help you. When you are so stiff, hmm? when you were so stiff, the Holy Spirit fails on how to help you because you're living on do's and don'ts. But if you are flexible, you're easy to bring back. Okay, mama, my flat is very small. So when you come to London, I might not see you because my flat is very small. Nah. Can I say something to you, Linda Murray Jackson? Oh. I don't know why I call you Jackson, but... <laughs> Okay, there is a prophet of God I knew some years back. He was called Jackson from the United States. So, anyways, Linda, listen, this is me now, okay? If I am your guest and I don't eat this, I don't eat that, that is me, okay? If I want a big bed, I should get it myself. If I come to your house and your bed is this small, I have to endure. If I need a big bed, I'll go back to my house. And this I, I used to tell Pastor Luleka. I'm like, no, I'm fine. When I go back home, I'll enjoy. That is why I make my place comfortable. I make my place what I want it to be. 
So when I go out on ministry, it doesn't matter how people treat me. Okay? God has blessed me with a gift of humility. I'm very humble. You might never hear me speak anything. I go by situation. You bring me to your house, you give me pap, I'll eat that one. <laughs> You're saying your bed is king size, beautiful. Okay? Whatever you give me, I'll eat. For the gospel I endure. It's just for, for the sake of the name of the Lord, I endure. I'll be coming to London very soon. I'll communicate. I'll be coming to London very soon. Actually, I'm trying to work it out uh, because there's a few things I have to finish out way here. And then when I come, I'll definitely come see you, of course. In Jesus' mighty name. Anyways, so listen unto me. This thing, uh, let's not talk about bed. <laughs> Big king size, small one, everything. We have different desires. And I never reduce myself. Okay? There's one thing. Way back, many years ago. I didn't even have a tire. But I told God. If you were going to give me a car. Please don't give me a small one. I don't like small cars. The lower ones. The one, maybe because I'm big. So when I sit in those small cars. I feel like I'm suffocating. I feel like, okay, I'm going to bust this car. I feel like, okay. Uh, and this is the way I... I don't want to enter something going down. I want to enter something going up. Like, if it's a car, I want to enter going up. Or at my level. Not uh, you as if you were going in a hole. Okay, so I told God, if you must give me a car, please, Give me a big one. Period. There is a time he, I was somewhere and someone gifted me with a small car. I never left that place with it. I also gave it out to someone. I said, mm -mm. thank you. God has blessed me. I, I, I received it. I prayed for it. And I also gave it out immediately. I said, God, you're testing me. But this small one, I don't want This small one, I don't want. I want a big one. Me, I love big. I don't know. Maybe because I, 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 I accept who I am. So I must know where I am from and everything. Okay? But then I don't dictate. Very, very humble. I've learned a lot from you. Mom and ministry is not a joke at all. <laughs> Yes, I I really, really, I, I bless the Lord for humility. I'm very humble. And uh, very many people take me for granted. And some people say the anointing you carry is not, is not given to you because you don't look like it. Mm -hmm. Amen. Please, Georgie, send Georgie. Yanchev, please send that inbox, okay? Send that inbox. Send me this inbox, okay? Send it to me inbox. I'm going to reply it immediately. All right, everybody. It was been nice talking to you. Please be free. Be free with yourself. Let the Holy Spirit have some work inside of you. Be free with yourself. Let God have some work to do with you. Don't be too stiff. Don't, don't live with what I am telling you. Don't try to say, Mama said, Mom said, I should do this, I should do that, I should do here, I should do this. Don't. Okay? Do who you are. Then me and the Lord and the Holy Spirit will get you to who you are supposed to be or who they want you to be. Don't be what I am telling you to be. You can never be. Be who you are at the best of your knowledge. And let God and the Holy Spirit 
have some work to do in your life. And they'll bring you out perfect. Because only them work perfectly. Only Trinity works out to perfection. I love you, everybody. Please take care of yourselves. I'll see you in the morning. All right. God bless you. God bless you. Keep in prayer. Let the fire on the altar keep burning. I love you greatly. I love you so much. And I bless the Lord for your life. It was a wonderful time. And I pray that the Holy Spirit will take over from where I've, st I've stopped with intercession and great supplications unto the Lord for the granting of our heart desires and the need of our hearts. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Son of our living God. I love you, everybody. Please take care. See you. Bye-bye.